Welcome to my first video. Here we've got an Apple IIe. Got a couple of broken keys. Real pain. It happens. People ship things to you and it just gets beat to heck in shipping. This one has an interesting life. It uh, is used here in the shop to test RAM chips. So I took the motherboard and put a ZIF socket on it. Test 4164s. Apple gives you this great test routine that goes through and tests them really well. And I've got it hooked up to my uh, free LCD monitor TV here on the wall. Uh, well, I said wall, the back of the uh, the workbench. Workbench is a little messy, so bear with me for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Apple IIe apart and start working on the keys. So as you'll see, this has the typical problem of your Apple IIs in that it's missing its feet. Uh, the feet turn to goo and they leave mess like this on your workbench so that's got to be cleaned off I'll use some goo gone on that in the meantime we've got a lot of screws to take apart so we'll pause until the next one so here we have a small pile of screws we've taken all the screws out from around the edge uh, you don't mess with these four right here because these are what's used to hold the power supply in but once you have all the other screws out it's just a matter of flipping it over and pulling the top off the computer now you notice on this one the keyboard comes with it so the easy thing to do here is we will just turn it off unplug the keyboard ribbon cable here and then we lift it off flip it over and there is our circuit board so we're going to take the circuit board we're going to desolder some of the dip the uh, switches the key switches off of it and then pull them and replace them Okay, this is where I'm going to cheat a little bit. I've got a desoldering iron here that will take the solder right off. So I can just use it and melt the solder and pull it off. And I tell you, if you're using one of those little handheld desoldering irons or desoldering things that, that you click and put in there, it's just not even close to how easy this makes everything. So once that's done, then it's flipping it over and taking the key cap out or the key switch out now when you're taking the key switches out it's easier to get these little latches down in here pushed in if you remove a couple of the key caps of the keys next to them now they can be a little tricky to pull out so one of my favorite tools for working on a keyboard is one of these bent screwdrivers uh, if you're familiar with around the Dallas area this is Tanner Electronics uh, Jim had a bunch of these. I bought a uh, handful of them and heated them up, put them in a vise, heated them up, and bent them to make a little chip puller with them. But they also work great for getting under keycaps and lifting them right off. Now, once you have that done, you can get your tool in there to flip these little pieces in. And when you do, the key switch lifts right out. That's what's the beauty of having one of those desoldering tools. It just makes it easy so the parts just lift right out. And then once you have the replacement, it just fits down in and snaps into place. And you just got to make sure that you get your, your pieces, your uh, little soldering tabs down in the hole as they go in. And then these just snap into place. We can look on the bottom side and we can see that both of these have come through and are ready to be soldered in. Now let's do the other one. All right, both of them are in. Both of them are soldered. We've got this one soldered right here and this one soldered in right here. Now it's just a matter of putting the keycaps back on and reassembling the computer. Now in doing this, I have some extra keycaps here that came off of another computer that was one that I picked up, uh, well actually two of them, I picked up while in California doing some shopping while I was out there for the day job and that allowed me to go out there and find these and buy them and bring them back. They were smashed, they had case damage and they had messed up keyboard so I've already taken one of those apart and used keycaps and key switches off of it to fix another 2E and and here's another one my shop 2e now has a working keyboard that uh, I can go ahead and use this for more testing when I want to test IO cards floppy drives and other things that people send me for repairs but before we go I put the top back on it so let's see what we've got 
there's the first key and then there's the second key so we've got a good working keyboard now and i'll be able to use this for testing more items around the shop thanks and i hope you enjoyed it